and ask me, don't talk too much about bits and bytes. So, here we go. Let's talk about my favorite pair of boxer shorts. I love them. They fit perfectly. They're the best I ever had. And I would even say they're my lucky pair of boxer shorts. I wear them today. I'll show you later. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> So, um, who of you also have lucky boxer shorts? So, okay, great, I'm not the only one. Now, with these boxer shorts, I've, I've got them for a long time, I should get rid of them, but I really love them and I'm reluctant to let go. Now, lucky boxer shorts are important also for you, eh, because at the end of the session we have two great prizes, so I hope you're wearing them. And um, if you're wondering why the story about boxer shorts, well, uh, I'm working for the European Workstation Group, or High Performance Platforms, and uh, I meet a lot of uh, uh, customers, organizations, who are now on a platform that they really love. But there are some very good reasons to let go and to move to something that will bring a lot more performance and reliability. But it's hard to change. It's hard to change for me, and sometimes it's good to look a little bit at the benefits. So, in the next few minutes, I want to spend some time introducing the workstations to you, and also to bring out a customer here on stage that will share their journey of change. Now, with HP workstations, luck is not a factor. They are designed to perform. Let me introduce you to one of the family members. This is the HP Z1. It's an all-in-one device, and it comes with the best-in-class processors, memory, and it's also certified to run with the software that you use in your business. So we work closely with Avid, Adobe, Autodesk to make sure you get the most performance uh, out there. Here we go. So you can also open up all of our workstations and upgrade the components in there, change them easily. If you want to go to new graphics, no need to buy something new, open it up and change the components in there. Is that cool? Do you like that? So you will find these workstations in uh, your environments where a lot of performance is needed. And uh, this is a picture courtesy uh, of our dear customer, DreamWorks, which uses uh, our Z820, which is the most computing performance you can put on someone's desk. And they use that for their animation work. Now we're pushing uh, the envelope with this, uh, with this machine. Uh, last week we introduced the Z840 and uh, you will be able to benefit uh, when that's released of uh, 36 cores and up to two terabyte of memory. So not storage, memory in there. So that's the performance, that's the power you need to get some of your work done. Now, performance is one thing, but reliability is the other. So by um, testing way beyond the industry standard, we make sure that our workstations are ready to operate 24 seven year in, year out. And that's important when you need to deliver on your next deadline, but it's also important when you're doing your, doing your work up there in that tower. So you can either then work with the workstation technology or, of course, alternatively count on your lucky boxer shorts. So think of me when you're boarding your plane uh, in some time from now. Now, this combination of performance and reliability that's unique to uh, HP, and you'll find that throughout our whole product line, from the entry-level Z200 series way up to the Z800 series, where you get all the performance in place. And that combination has resulted in a very good acceptance by the market. And this might come as a surprise to some of you, but we actually have about 50% market share in most of the European uh, countries. So, did that surprise you? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> That's what I like. Now, this is a lot about HP and the benefits in, in the workstation series. But I think it's good to hear of uh, one of our customers. And um, let me introduce you to a couple who is no stranger to change. And I will do that by running the intro of their TV series. He's Patrick. And she's Kylie. We both love to cook, but he's the pro. We both love Italy, but she lives here and speaks the language. Once upon a time, I was a highly paid magazine editor in Australia with this boyfriend who proposed to me. Meanwhile, I'm in London, an ambitious young lawyer working for the most prestigious investment bank in the world. But neither of us are happy, so I abandon everything.
everything and run away to live in Italy. And I tell my boss I'm resigning to become a chef. Then, one day I come across an online video of Patrick cooking. And the next thing you know, she's writing me an email. Dear Patrick, you don't know me, but I just feel like you're a dreamer, I'm a dreamer. How would you like to come away on an adventure through Italy? I know people everywhere will meet and cook for the locals and have the trip of a lifetime. But the adventure really did begin when Patrick met Kylie. A love of food story. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Patrick and Kylie. Apologies if that made you feel slightly nauseous. It's <laughs> completely normal. Look, um, when you see that trailer, it does look a little bit Disney, a little bit corny, and you think, yeah, it sounds a bit scripted. But that is exactly what happened to us. I mean, I had a really good career, a regular salary, uh, a proper job in an office, and, uh, and quit everything, abandoned it to run away and live in Italy. And I had this idea. I thought, look, I, you know, Food, television, it's great, but I don't want to be just cooking inside a controlled environment in a kitchen. That's boring. You know, I wanted to basically do Jamie Oliver meets James Bond, because I have a weakness for James Bond. So I thought, look, I want to put in helicopters and fast cars and high-speed motorbikes and, you know, horses and be, you know, really running around and making this uh, the type of show where when you come home after a long day in an office and you're tired, you switch it on and you watch this episode and it makes you want to quit your job, leave your partner, get on a plane and run away and be as irresponsible as we are. And, um, and you know what? I thought it was a really good idea, but uh, nobody else agreed. And I moved to Italy and knocked on people's doors for three years. Everyone said, you're crazy, you know, you've got no experience. This is a big budget idea. You can't do that. And uh, just, you know, start small or, or just forget about it, basically. And I thought, no, no, there's got to be a way. If you've got enough enthusiasm and enough creativity, you can, you can make this happen. I know you can. And anyway, finally, I found this tiny little production company in Rome who said yes. And, um, and I found, by chance, Patrick's uh, video blog. And I said, you know, this seems really crazy. Do you want to fly out tomorrow, meet me in Rome? We're going to shoot a pilot for a TV series. You've never heard of me, but I think it's going to be a global success. And um, fortunately, he said yes. And uh, you know, a few days later, we shot the pilot. It got picked up. And now it's airing in 68 countries across Discovery, National Geographic, Sky, Fox, and a whole heap of other networks. Which I guess sounds as though maybe it's quite straightforward and quite a linear process, but it really wasn't. And when we got there on the first day of shooting, I remember meeting the camera guys in particular for the first time. And they were used to shooting something that was a lot more scripted. They'd been working on soap operas, whereas what we had in mind was essentially run-and-gun food porn. And um, that was quite a lot for them to get their heads around. And so we spent a lot of time behind the camera as well, trying to coax them and, and, and tell them what we had seen in food television, the kind of modern food television that's out there. But the one thing that we couldn't control because we didn't have the technical knowledge was the editing process. So once the show was finished and we decided, you know, what, what are we going to do for our next project, we thought we want to take control of it. We want to be able to do everything ourselves. We want to be able to film and we want to be able to understand the editing process and, and do that too. So we started editing. We, we threw ourselves into it a couple of years ago using uh, Final Cut Pro on, on a Mac and, and away we went. And, you know, I think every one of us has, like, a, you know, the, some crazy concept that you think, look, if only I had the funding for this or the time or, or you know, the freedom, the creative freedom. Uh, but, you know, I think you just got to get out there and do whatever you can now because otherwise you'll never make, you'll never make that project, you know. So uh, we did that with, the, with this series. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm literally on the phone to the head of the network in Canada saying, yeah, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah, we're, we're hosting it and we're shooting it and I'm editing it, but, but don't worry, we'll deliver it, it's fine. And, uh, and then freaking out because editing it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I mean, a complete nightmare for both of us. Kylie's editing it, but this computer is literally wheezing like an 80-year-old man with emphysema and it's, it's rendering hell, there were crashes, and... 
and we became very familiar with that beach ball of death, uh, the Death Star, and it has many names with many people, but um, it was a very emotional experience. But, you know, it, it gave us confidence. We thought, no, we've just got to, we've got to work harder. We've got to get more knowledge and, uh, and, and, and aim a little bit higher as well. So next project, I was, uh, did a, a travel series in Italy all on my own because I thought, yeah, I can't afford uh, a crew, so I'm just going to go and do it by myself, strapped all my film equipment to my waist on a bicycle. Uh, it was also raining, so I was holding an umbrella with my SLR hanging off my, uh, off my shoulder. So it was a challenge, but you know, again, we're thinking, no, it's, you just gotta, you gotta get out there and do it. So. I, I think at this point though, we <laughs> had realized that our creative desire and, and excitability to create something incredible was outstripping what we could do uh, technologically. And that's when we spoke to the guy's uh, escape technology, a guy called Paul Snell, who was, who was the nicest guy. And he came up with a controversial suggestion that we should look at the, the Z-Series workstations. Now, we, we said, yeah, okay, come on, we'll, we'll meet with you. We'll chat about it. But when we went, we were, we were really skeptical. I mean, we had a, a completely different workflow. And, you know, we were essentially part of a, another, another cult. And, um, and so we went along and, you know, we were interested to hear what he said, but we weren't sure if we were going to go for it. But then you, you start actually hearing another side of the story. And you start hearing about the, the big production companies who are using this technology. And, that, you know, they were using it for, for that reason, that, it, that it's reliable and that it's fast. And that was something that we realized that we needed. Particularly for my next project, because... Um, you know, I had production companies approach me and say, yeah, you know, do you want to do this show in Italy because you're based there and you've got all these crazy contacts and, and uh, you know, we want to do it in this very conservative way. And I thought, no, I want to film the real in Italy. I want it to be spontaneous. I want it to be, to be exciting. And, and, and what I found was going around, you know, I get these cool characters like some, you know, mafia dude in Sicily. He would close up because there's a big film crew around. I thought, if I'm on my own, imagine how flexible I can be. So I've, for the last four months, been shooting um, in the south of Italy, tiny little village, all on my own. And, you know, I, I strap a five kilo tripod to my back. You know, I've got all my film equipment out with me every single day. I'm like climbing mountains, hanging out with millionaires and shepherds and, and parties on rooftops. It's, it's exhausting, but I'm so excited. The only thing is though, when I get to the post-production, it gets scary because I've made these promises to these international networks and I didn't want to be on the phone saying to them, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll deliver it on that day, trust me, but not knowing if I've got the power or the reliability to, to get it out there. It sounds like a line, but trust me, it's, it's scary because it's intimidating to talk to a Discovery or a National Geographic. And that's for me, that's what it came down to. I was, I was really reticent to, to shift over because your computer is, is, is so intimate. And if you're, if you're an editor, I know I spend like 16 hours a day just there, one spot, not talking to another human being. And, and it's, it's not even me. <laughs> it's, you know, it is. It's hard to shift over. But at, yeah, in the end, I, I want to deliver and I want to be audacious with my projects. I want to promise big things. And, and so it's just about being able to say, yeah, I'll deliver it and it will be done and it will be beautiful. Meanwhile, I've been in London for the last three months filming uh, Vegetable Soup with a C100 and a macro lens. Um, the next project that I'm going to do is an online cooking school. It's 130 videos. And I really wanted to film something that was cinematic, completely different to everything that's out there at the moment. And again, I've got to deliver this by Christmas, and I can't afford to be waiting around. So that's why you know, I'm using the workstation, and Kylie has... Um, has that's, the portable that's my editing solution. suite. Yeah, <laughs> and this changes everything. I mean, suddenly an editing suite isn't in a building somewhere. It can be on a balcony in, in Positano, apparently. And so, you know, that's why we've made the transition. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it is a transition, you know. It can, it can take some time and there is a learning curve. But the fact is, once you get over that learning curve, then you, know, you have the reliability to back you up and it makes all the difference. And I hope that we can um, share that with you later this year. I guess the one thing I would say to, to wrap it up for me, the analogy I always think of is that essentially what we're doing now, it's like the difference between a, a great restaurant and a bad restaurant. 
Because when I go to a good restaurant, I don't even know the inner workings of it. I don't know what's going on in the kitchen, and, and these amazing plates of food just seem to appear in front of me, and then the empty plate disappears as well. And the only thing I'm focusing on is, is enjoying the experience. And I think, really, it's the same with what we're doing now. I don't have to think about whether the inner workings are going are gonna to back up what I'm doing. I'm just focusing 100% on creativity, and that's exactly where we want to be. So. We hope that uh, you know, we'll, we'll be showing it to you guys perhaps this time next year. And if you want to follow the rest of the adventure, then you can find us on pretty much any social media outlet imaginable. Thank so, you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank Thanks, Patrick and Carly, for this remarkable story about uh, change. Now, if you want to learn about more case uh, studies, for people that made uh, the switch and stepped uh, over to the HP technology, just go to our website, hp.com, set workstations, and you will also find some nice comparisons on performance, and you will also see some very interesting price points. Okay? Now, if you're ready to change, just reach out, send us a message, and I'll make sure that we connect to you in your country. So, just send me a line. And now, prices. So, the NVIDIA K4200, the latest card. Everybody who got in here before 6 p.m., find your white ticket. Find your white ticket. Find the white ticket. Not the red tickets, the white ticket. Do you all understand? The white ticket. Raise your hand because I can't see you. Okay, you all, all right. Do you, do you all have your white ticket available? because we are going to give away an NVIDIA card and an HP Z book, 15, right now. Get your white ticket out. All right, let's go ahead. We are going to have the honor of having you choose the winning raffle ticket number. There we go. Super this Dig deep. <laughs> It's my number, it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> this is the K4200 NVIDIA graphics card. Okay, and? you ready? The winner is seven, six, four, three, five, six. Where is the winner? We have a winner. <laughs> Congratulations. There we go. We just okay. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's all good. That's excellent. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so okay. I think the cool thing now is that we're going to have everyone stand up who's got a winning, who's got a white ticket. Please everyone stand up because as we read the number, those that don't have that number, we ask to sit down. And this is the fun part because eventually there, were, there shall be only one. So last and best, we got a ZBook 15. That's all the power of a desktop workstation in a mobile envelope. <laughs> so you get all the professional graphics, the memory processor, Thunderbolt is on there. So let's have a look. Who is our winner? Let's read the ticket uh, one at a time. Seven, six. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you're not allowed to say things. Who's, who's got seven? Okay, who's got six? Who doesn't? Sit down. Keep going. Four. This doesn't seem to be working right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Five. Five, okay. Those that don't have, there we go. Zero. Zero. Ooh, getting close. Seven. Oh. Hey, wow. congratulations. Awesome.